We're going live. We are live. We are live. Welcome to Stock Unlock Live Podcast, episode number 49, where Canadian investing YouTuber Daniel Pronk with 213,000 subscribers and software engineer Jake Ruth, that's me, team together to bring to you stock market news, what we're doing in the market, et cetera. We love analyzing your stocks. Today, we are going to be taking one or two live suggestions to start off, and then we will be going through the Stock Unlock screener, and we will have a special announcement in the middle of the stream. Daniel, how are you doing up there? It's getting cold up in Canada, eh? Oh, it's snowing, bud. To check out my new crib, too. Look at that. <laughs> it's totally realistic with part of your chair disappearing into the background <laughs> of the image. The the investments have been paying off, everyone. Check that out. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> um, no, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I see we got Alex Pohl in the chat. Good morning. If you are here with us live, say hello. Let us know where you're streaming from. If you're listening to the recording, come hang out with us live sometime. Uh, we met Alex actually at the Stock and Lock New York City meetup. Dude, there's way too much Daniel going on in that screen right now. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm, I'm just having fun. I'll stop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we learned about the virtual backgrounds today. So what have you been seeing in the market, Daniel? I know up in uh, the United States, we got Thanksgiving this week. I think that might have been last week for you Canadians. No, our, our Thanksgiving was like last month. It's like a month earlier. Um, anyways, to be completely honest, I haven't really been focusing too much on the markets recently. <laughs> I've just been like building stock and luck and not really paying too much attention. So I... I don't really know where things are at. Like if you ask me what's Nvidia's price today or Tesla or Apple or Microsoft, I have no idea. Fair enough. I'm I'm in the same boat, have been very heads down. It's probably a good time then to just go through our screener and find some stocks. Daniel, I'm going to share my screen. So keep an eye on the chat and uh, we'll make this pretty interactive here. Yeah, let's look for some new ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. Dude, huge, huge plus one on the vibes for building stock and lock right now. It's always it's always filled with ups and downs building a startup. But I feel you and I, uh, we're ascending a peak right now. We have a team being built under us. We're building AI features. We're planning the future of stock and lock in terms of our pricing, who we're selling to, and really ready to just take this business to the next level. Uh, we are soaring up in subscribers right now. and just want to, again, thank everyone who's been supporting us along the way. Yep. So yeah, let's uh, take up the stock and lock screener here. This is a screener that works around our insight scores, which is a stock and lock proprietary way of scoring stocks. And the purpose of this is to interact with the chat, try to find some good research candidates. And Daniel, feel free to guide me a bit here. I was planning on looking for some U.S. stocks in the mid cap range, uh, playing around with some of the scores we have here to look for a high growth, financially sound company. And I'm going to start plugging want... away. Let me know if you have any preferences. I do. So in 2022, actually, when I was on the plane flight to meet up with you in Oregon, I was researching a stock. And then when I landed in Oregon, I bought it. That stock ended up going up almost 200% and being bought out within the next year. Um, and I can kind of walk you through how I found that one using our screener. All right. You want me to put those uh, filters on yeah, right yeah. now? Okay. So the market cap. Go down to 500 million. Okay. Okay. And then include OTC in the exchanges. Do we want to keep it up to a 10, 10 billion? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? OTC, because some smaller caps trade on the OTC. This one did. Um, okay. Now go down to the margins, gross margin. and go 60 to 100%. So high gross margins can be an indicator that the business has a lot of profit potential. So I, I like to screen for companies with high gross margins. And then that's Fair. it. Fair enough. Yeah, so we're looking for a gross margin company is 60% or higher, and that gross margin on the last 12 months. Uh, you call it these insight scores, Daniel. I usually like to find companies that are very financially sound and at least uh, marginally growing some of their metrics. Yeah, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire this off. Let's see what we find. 39 results. All right, let's go. So I'm just going to open the first uh, three here. What I like to do is I'll open all these in new tabs. 
And then if we like any of them, uh, we could add them to the watch list. So looks like we have CEIX here, console energy. It's got a 4.51 insight score, which is very high. Uh, let's look at the price action on the stock recently. It does look like it is sitting near all-time highs. It's got a free cash flow yield of 20%. Wait, how low was the stock in 2020? Really? Four. Okay. It looks like this stock went all the way down. The lowest point I'm finding, Daniel, is actually about th a high $3 mark. So, so <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this stock has... Uh, Wow, it has really rebounded since its COVID lows. But what's strange to me, Daniel, is this free cash flow yield is incredibly high. Uh, they also have a decent dividend that they're paying out. Let's look at what this company does. It engages in the production of, excuse me, uh, bituminous coal, which focuses on the extraction and preparation of the coal in the Appalachian Basin. I'll be honest, I have no clue what they are talking about, but this <laughs> seems to be a uh, some kind of a, coal mining or coal production company yep been public since 2017 okay out of my depth here with this industry uh but yeah it looks like they did ipo around 20 ish dollars a share they went up then went into the pits of despair but have since <laughs> rebounded back greatly so let's try to look at the financials and figure out uh why that is and feel free to guide me along here daniel um Let's move this out to look at the tra trailing 12 months. Uh, they are sitting at TTM all-time high revenues. It also looks like their margins have increased since uh, their cost of revenue has remained constant, but the revenue that they're making is going up. So that is probably why our screener picked up on this, Daniel. It looks like the gross margin has expanded recently. So that is uh, great to see. Yep. wonder how the uh, cash flow statement is. It's also producing all high operating cash flow in terms of trailing 12 month basis. And that's just to talk about that gross margin uh, that we were talking about here. Oh, someone Pardeep says in the chat, this was owned by Monish Pabrai as per his recent 13 apps. So apparently Monish owes this, owns the stock. Are you trying to tell me that the stock unlock insight screener is helping us find stocks that some of the greatest investors in the world are buying? I'm not surprised. It sounds like it. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah, so far it looks like they're at operating cash flow, trailing 12 months highs, revenue trailing 12 months highs, gross profit trailing 12 months highs, seeing like what their debt position is right now. And they are carrying some debt, uh, mm -hmm. which is about equal to their cash position. But our insight score could tell us more about their financial health there. Uh, this is a pretty good score, even though there's only three ratings. It uh, looks like the shares are going down. Uh, their debt compared to their EBITDA is very good. They seem well capitalized. They're growing on almost all metrics here. Yeah. So this kind of sounds like a commodity business, though. If they're exposed to coal, then uh, maybe their cash flows and everything are increasing so much due to coal prices going up. Yeah. It looks like they are buying back some shares. Uh, I, I agree with you there, Daniel. It looks like they're seeing some cash flow and revenue increases. So for those of you who are watching this stream and looking at this as a research candidate, I think the next thing to do would be, one, try to become an expert on the coal industry. Uh, Daniel and I are not super keen on commodity pricing and things like that, so it's hard to comment as to where this business is going. But it's definitely been doing well as of late. My main concern would just to see if this growth can continue. The stock has uh, went up a lot in recent months, so you have to ask yourself how much meat is left there on the bone. But uh, it seems like they are in a good financial standing right now. They're paying a dividend as well as buying back shares. So I'm going to add this one to the watch list. Seems like a good uh, research candidate. Well, all right. I remember the stock you just pulled up before this one, I think was Futu, which is a Chinese stock actually. Sweet. Another high insight score. What do you know about this one, Daniel? I know that they own the brokerage platform Moomoo. Okay. Familiar <laughs> with them. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's about all I know. I think they're like the I think they've been compared to the Chinese Robin Hood. Well, it seems like they have better financial metrics than Robin Hood according to their filings, because Robin Hood's 
insight score, I'm going to guess is not a 4.43 since the company is losing money or has been losing money. Yeah. 3.07. Interesting. Lots of very bads in there too. Yeah. We can actually compare them side by side here. Silly me. I mean, this is this insight score. So there's two ways to look at insight scores or, or rather two ways to approach looking at the overall insight score. Let me say that you have the total which is easy to understand. It's the average of all the scores, but the makeup of those scores is very important. So sometimes you'll have a ton of very good, but also a lot of very bad. This is actually one of the best score makeups I've seen in a long time. There's only one very bad, zero bad. So everything is an average or above. So even though not everything is very good, uh, it does index to a lot more green than uh, having more of a balance to get to that same score. Yeah, let's take a look at what's going on here. Yeah. Okay. Decent fine. Their shares are going down. That doesn't seem too bad. Growth, uh, growth really for both businesses is great. Almost perfect. Profitability on food too looks way better. Okay. What? 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 221% free cash flow margin. What is going on here? Yeah. So it look at the net margin. Sense. Okay. These margins are, are ridiculous. Yeah, this, uh, I think that the stock was very hot in like 2020, 2021, but with the whole China situation going on and, you know, Chinese stocks being hated by the market right now, I think that this one has come down a lot as well. If you want to take a look at the past like three years on Futu. Yeah, the, the last thing I was gawking at here, not to derail us, is the amount of stock-based compensation Robinhood is doing actually is blowing my absolute face off right now. 53% of Robinhood's <laughs> stock-based compensation as a percent of revenue. Insane. Anyways, That's ridiculous. Yeah, I bring us back to a Futu here. And just to like show what you were talking about, Daniel, let's throw like a few other Chinese stocks in here. Just like look at them. I think one is a T... Uh, Tencent. I'm always forget the ticker name. Yeah, it's a weird one. T C E H Y. Um, so all right. So it looks like this one had a much more extreme bump here, but you could see they all bumped a bit. Futu is actually performing the best out of those three. It's still up 288 percent over the past like three years. Yeah, with one year they're all pretty similar. Three years it starts to break away. But yeah, I mean, this is a huge fall from grace, though, for anyone who bought up here. But it does seem to be making a comeback from its lows. And that's a big difference between companies that are financially sound and not. The stock price will move around uh, due to people's emotions, a lot of macro stuff. But, you know, depending on how you think about China, it does seem that this company is doing very well financially. I'll see if we can find any insider transactions here. Not too much. Uh, yeah, I mean, this seems like another research candidate to me. We're going to share this at the end of this uh, stream, too. So I'll add it into my watch list. Stock and Lock Live 49. Let's go. Okay. Hey, what is, what was two. that third one? Yeah, we're two for two right now. Also, uh, I'm not sure if we're getting any comments from the chat, uh, but we're on Scorpio Tankers. What is this? Engages in the provision of marine transportation and of petroleum products. Oh, dude. My, I think Michael Burry owned this at one point. Okay, this firm invo is involved in oil seaborne transportation of refined petroleum products from tanker industry to the international shipping markets. I love learning about businesses like this. I mean, I would never have known something like this exists. Uh, so they own and lease a lot of charters, tankers, boats, and they are involved in shipping and moving around uh, petroleum products, as it says up here, in the international markets. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah, uh, this, one, this one's probably going to have an insane free cash flow yield and everything because shipping rates were very high over the past couple of years. But I've heard that they've been absolutely collapsing. So I am not... I'm not confident that free cash flow yield of 37% is going to remain. You can also see, yeah, yeah, the revenue has been coming down quite a bit. Interesting. So this is a good note for investors watching. A lot of times when you're screening for stocks, it'll look at the trailing 12 months. And while that does look nice, you do want to see the quarterly by quarterly view. Uh, this is not the first time that this has happened. You can see back in 2021, uh, the revenue went back up. So this does seem to be a cyclic business, as you're mentioning, Daniel. It, you yeah. can actually see this happen again in 2015. So... 
interesting pattern. Yeah, and you can you can also see that the margins expanded quite a bit in 2022 based on that revenue chart. And now it looks like the, the margins are coming back down. Oh yeah, these <laughs> these margins are a little bit uh, topsy turvy over here. A little sus. Interesting. I'm a uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a no on this one, Daniel. I'm not sure uh, what you're thinking about it, but I don't think it's good enough to be a, a research candidate here. I would agree with that. All right, this is uh, not making it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, th this might be a good uh, pause point as the uh, stream intermission. As people know, we used to do these shows every week. It is incredibly challenging to hit that cadence with building stock and lock, but we are doing our best to bring you these shows when we can. Really exciting announcement, Daniel. I think you have something to tell us about AI and stock and lock. Yeah, so we are starting to leverage AI over at stock and lock. And the way that we are doing that is pretty unique. We are taking basically our stock and lock insight scores, and we are leveraging basically the output of those insight scores on every stock to create stock and lock analysis. That is basically the summarization of all of the key metrics and data points that we take a look at in our insight score, and then even a few more. So basically, it's going to be an in depth. I believe it's currently, well, we have two pages final, well, not finalized, but in progress, but I believe the whole reports or analysis are going to be about eight pages long. So I, we got to shout out Karan here, man, because Karan, one of the full-time engineers at Stock Unlock has been working hard to get a little demo for today's um, stream here. So I'm going to quickly share my screen. And let's take a look at Apple. So Jake, can you see this? Oh, I am a uh, starstruck right now. I don't even have words. What are we looking at here? Because it looks beautiful and majestic. Okay, so this, I need to give a disclaimer. This is not even in beta. I would say this is alpha still, but this is kind of what we've been working on. So as I said, we are working on stock unlock AI analysis. So AI generated analysis of stocks. Our users will be able to basically hit one button on stock unlock and it will summarize the business's growth, dividends, valuation, and um, a bunch of other things that I'm just blanking out on right now, but a lot of other things like the management of the business as well. So we have two pages here from Apple generated. Again, th this is not finalized. This is just an alpha stage, but you can see the dividends page, and then we also have the valuations page. So it kind of gives you like the free cash flow yield of the business versus the 10-year bond yield. So you can see Apple's free cash flow yield is below the 10-year bond yield right now, indicating that it could be expensive. You can also see the valuation scores here are pretty bad. And then we have a summary. So I'll read the summary a little bit. This says the price to earnings ratio of Apple is currently 28.2, which is higher than its five-year average of 23.8 which is telling you basically that the company is trading above its historical averages. This indicates that investor, investors are willing to pay a higher price for each dollar of earnings generated by the company compared to the past five years. The price to free cash flow stands at 27.5, which is also above its five-year average of 21.6, suggesting the stock may be more expensive relative to the free cash flow it generates. It does the same thing for the price to sales ratio above the five-year average. Price to earnings growth ratio is 3.14, which suggests that Apple is expensive relative to the projective earnings growth over the next few years as well. Apple has significantly outperformed the SPY over the both the three and five year period with a growth rate of 130, 130% and 282% respectively against the SPY of 45% and 56%. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing and I also just kind of summarized and I apologize for my poor reading, but <laughs> you kind of get the point here. It's summarizing basically Apple's valuation, and we are going to work on these text summaries to make them easier to read and better, essentially. But we're going to do that with the dividends. You can see Apple's forward dividend yield of 0.5% is below its historical average, which you can also see in this chart right here. Apple's dividend yield has been coming down for a few years as a stock has been getting more and more expensive. So Same we, thing down. We do have a good uh, question in the chat just for me to interject. I think. To put people in the right mindset as to what we're looking at here, if you don't mind leaving that up, Daniel, what we are essentially building in Stock and Lock is a one-click button on any stock to get AI 
enabled report analysis. So Alex Pohl asks here, so is AI analyzing the stock and lock data and then writing a report on it, question mark? Kind of. So the right way we view AI and how we could deliver the most value to investors is not with a chat bot, not with the uh, chat interface that you would get from a chat GPT or something like that. There might be a place for that. But where we see a lot of value is AI facilitated reports. So I would say if you imagine AI and Daniel's brain having a baby, that is what these reports are. So we are coming up with the structure of the reports. We are dictating exactly how we are training the AI, the data we put into it, and the type of analysis we get back. However, that is in combination with our custom generated charts. So what Daniel is showing you was one page of a many page report where we will walk through tons of different categories of a business. AI is helping us with a lot of the text snippets, as well as the language to write the English in the report. And then we are providing the structure. So from the user's perspective, you are just clicking a button and then we do all that hard work for you. This is just the tip of the iceberg for AI. And we are going to really look to integrate this into our products across our portfolio tracker and other areas of stock and lock. So you could view this as the start of a new type of feature in stock and lock where we can bring a lot more value with AI enablement while not putting all of the responsibility on the user to understand how to prompt and talk to the AI as well as train it to get it to behave properly. Yeah. So I have another example here really quick of Microsoft and I'll just share kind of the more <clears throat> conclusion. Oops, wrong thing. Right here. So this is Microsoft's valuation score. And as we can see, let's just focus on the conclusion here. This conclusion drawn from the higher than average valuation ratios across price to earnings, price to free cash flow, and price to sales is indicating that investors are currently pricing Microsoft stock at a premium. The, and then also right here, the overall valuation score of 1.6 out of 5 suggests that the company is overvalued at present. So in addition to summarizing, or sorry, in addition to the insight scores, these analysis will also help you drive to conclusions of like what all of the data actually means. So rather than having to look at all of these different charts and then look at the insight scores and then come to your own conclusions, which you should still do, the analysis is going to basically summarize everything for you and help you get the conclusion of what all the data means as well. Amazing. Well, we have a, a very cool from Alex Pohl, which was right after a big, ah, so that sounds great. Uh, Paolo asks, do you think your AI will be able to give a quick breakdown of the most recent 10K, 10Q, et cetera? Uh, short answer is yes. I would say the reports we're showing are definitely a subset of that. And as we said, we are going to be looking into all of these ideas. I think what uh, OSK, uh, OSKB here is asking, you know, is it possible uh, for, or would it be a better value to have a weekly summary of your portfolio or a screener? And I think they corrected that to watch list. Uh, the short answer is yes, uh, we are building portfolio AI that will include summaries. I'll also include going back and forth with the AI. Uh, we're not 100% sure how that would work yet, but to give it input such as the weightings and things that you want in your portfolio, it will then kind of analyze it against what your inputs are. We're also yeah. building notifications. Uh, so you're going to start getting emails for your portfolio on dividends received, stocks uh, hitting new highs, new lows. Uh, we did a lot of research on this. Daniel sent out a great uh, poll, and there was an overwhelming response that people are looking for these summarization AI features. So you have been heard, and we are hard at work over here. A huge shout out to Daniel, really the brainchild behind a lot of the design of this and how they go out. Then you get the workhorses uh, like me and Karan, who is now on this call, as well as the other engineers at Stock and Lock Jake. who are working feverishly behind the scenes. All right, before we go um, off topic, I want to talk about the portfolio as well. So our portfolio AI summaries, we have a few different features going on. So one thing that I was noticing the other day in my own personal portfolio is when I'm looking for stocks to add, or increase my positions in, it's a very time consuming and labor intensive process. I basically have to go and take a look at every single stock. What is it, what it is currently trading for versus its historical averages? Is the stock price down versus the rest of my portfolio, blah, blah, blah. So it's very, it can be very time intensive to even just know within your own portfolio, which stocks are looking cheap. 
our AI summaries are basically going to solve that problem. It can take a look at all of the historical price ratios versus what the stock is trading for today. Summarize that, highlight it. It can also show you your whole, your whole portfolio stock price returns year to date or even over the past three years and see which stocks are, are currently being left behind by the market, which stocks are currently in a dip, which stocks are trading for low price ratios versus their historical averages, and then spit out a summary that's like, hey, CP Rail is trading below historical averages right now. It's also, its stock hasn't done anything in three years versus every other stock in the market has gone up. Maybe that stock is looking attractive. Maybe that's one you want to consider focusing more funds to or something like that or researching further. We can also do things like over the past month, these stocks have provided the most returns to your portfolio. And I'm kind of blanking right now, but we have a lot of features that we can do and a lot of cool things that we can do with AI in the portfolio as well. So I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be like almost an AI assistant to help you keep track of your portfolio. We can also summarize all of the dividends you've received, you know, when earnings dates are coming up, important events coming up, all that can just be sent out via AI. So it's going to be really cool. We are ascending into Stock Unlock 2.0. If there's anyone in the chat who is not with us as a subscriber, of course, optional, come to your own conclusion, but we would love your support uh, by purchasing a subscription to Stock Unlock. And there is a lot on the horizon. I probably should not be saying this on stream, Daniel, but a little birdie told me that now might be a really good time to buy because we may or may not be augmenting our pricing and service offerings on a Stock Unlock 2.0 drop in early 2024. So as in the past, uh, we always treat existing customers with respect because we are existing customers as well. You don't need to have any concerns about us raising the price underneath you or anything like that. Uh, in the past, when we did that, people were kept on the same tier. But I will say uh, there's going to be a lot more coming down the pipeline. So if you like our current price, which is, dare I say, way underpriced, I'd snag that up. And then in 2024, we're going to be having a lot more drops, a lot more value configurability you could add to your subscription since we find there are a ton of different investors out there. And to be blunt, uh, we are not a super profitable company right now. We are alive, but you know, truth be told, this is a capitalist society in the business at the end of the day. So we're constantly trying to find ways to grow and all of that. So shout out to all of you who are already on there. And thank you for all the questions in the chat. Daniel, I, I, am, I am hyped for this. I think we got maybe a couple more minutes on this call if anyone else has questions for us if they want us to look at one more stock. Daniel's got videos to film. I've got uh, bugs to fix. Going to get home for Thanksgiving myself. No shortage of things to do here. Yeah, so Alex Pult, well, actually, first off, OSK says these features are basically what they were looking for. So that is great to hear. Don't worry. We're building it. We are investors ourselves. We want to streamline the whole investing process, make us all better investors, too. That's the goal. Alex also says, sorry if you've already answered this, but can we choose the parameters that the AI looks at? So I don't think that initially this will be possible, but I don't think that it is impossible. It is very possible. Okay. Uh, no promise on the timeline, though. <laughs> yeah, no promise on timeline, but that, it, that would be cool. We'll see. We'll see how in demand that is. We try to work based on what users want. So we'll see. Millhouse says, is stock unlock AI a robo advisor next? So we actually cannot legally give financial advice. So I don't know if, I don't know. Maybe we'll look into that. We do know of another company that has SEC compliance to actually legally give financial advice. So maybe we could look into that, but at the moment, no. It is possible in the future, but that, yeah, more of a long-term future thing than short-term. I think our current goal is we can really circumvent a lot of the financial advisory field by just actually giving software that's so good that you can come to your own conclusions in a very sane manner. So that's what we're driving after today. But we understand that uh, there is a need for that as well. Quick shameless plug. Also, thank you, Unicorn University. And I think Alex Pohl said this. Watch Jake on the other show. Very good. Uh, while we're here, Daniel, since we are about to close... And I think we have a smaller crew because it is a holiday week. So if anyone is listening to the recording, shout out to you. Happy Thanksgiving to those celebrating the U.S. I was on the Chris Voss show a few hours ago, actually. Uh, this is a really big power punching, a uh, couple thousand episode entrepreneurship show. Just talking about uh, 
you know, bettering yourself, uh, how to learn as an entrepreneur. They bring on astronauts, uh, people running businesses, writers. Anyways, you can find this recording right now on our YouTube stream. So if you're looking for something to watch, uh, come check out this video. We talk a lot about investing, uh, the principles of investing long-term compounding, as well as a little bit of the journey as to how Stock and Lock started. It's a bit of a different vibe and topics and content than we normally talk about. So feel free to show that some support. I think the real episode will be dropping in a few days. And of course, we do these to try to grow uh, Stock and Lock. So thank you to those who have checked that out and just wanted to let everyone know that the episode is available first on our YouTube stream and it will be on the Chris Voss podcast show in a couple of days. Um, Paulo asks a question here. I saw Stock and Lock comes with a Discord. Are you guys active in there? Yes, we are very active in the Discord. It's actually where a lot of the feedback, suggestions, bug reports, and basically all of that comes from. So we are in there every single day. All right. It's always really hard to end. Just, just so everyone can know how Daniel and I feel, it's a rock and a hard place. We love streaming live. We love going to you live. We love these shows. We really wish we could do them more, but we have signed up for a lot uh, running this business. Uh, Daniel also has his YouTube channel. So Daniel, I think you have some content to film. I have to finish fixing a very small bug that I was getting very close to before this video. And then I'm heading up for Thanksgiving. Thank you everyone for tuning in with us today. This was a very fun Stock Talk episode 49. Uh, we're going to do our best to have the 50th episode probably sometime in December, assuming we can get to it. And keep your eye on Stock and Lock. We are making moves. We are building new features. We have a team underneath us. And I always say this, this is just the beginning. KT, Oscopy, Unicorn University, Palo, Alex, Millhouse, anyone who I'm forgetting here, thank you so much for hanging out. Rajesh, 308 Bar, it's always a pleasure. Daniel, any uh, final words here before I hit the end stream button? Or do you just want me to shut up? <laughs> no. <Nope>, uh, <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in. Happy to see everyone again. I'm sad we can't do these more, but maybe one day again in the future. We'll we'll get back to it. We'll see. We'll create AI stunt doubles of us. All right. Anyways, <laughs> take it easy. I'm going to end the stream. Bye, everybody. Right, bye. bye, everyone.